Let's do a tricky radical problem. So this is an equation they're asking us to solve for x. The reason this is more complicated than most that you'll see, and in fact this is a problem that uh, you may not get in a regular Algebra 2 trig or pre-calc course, but you might get it in an honors course. The reason it's tricky is because you've got two radicals, so you can't just isolate the radical on one side because you have two of them, so you've got to do a little bit more advanced tricks here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. And when I do that, uh, I'm going to kind of wave my hand over the sum of the stuff. That's going to be squared, and that's going to be squared on the outside. And then on the in the inside, the O plus I, remember you have to foil that out, F-O-I-L. The O plus the I is going to be negative 2 times the square root of 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 10. So that's what you're going to get on that left side, and then on the right side, of course, you're going to get 16. Now what I want to do is, now I do have one radical, but I still have to do, I still have to isolate this on one side of the equation and then square both sides again. So again, I'm going to wave my hands a little bit over this. Um, that's a minus 1, I'm sorry, positive 1 minus 10 is negative 9, but then I'm going to add it to the other side. So that's going to give me a 25 on this side. I've got... Uh, 5x on the left side, but I'm going to subtract it from that side, so I'll have negative 5x. And then on this left side, I'm just going to leave my uh, single radical. In fact, I'm not going to divide out the 2. You can do that, but then I'd have a fraction I'd have to deal with, and I prefer to not deal with fractions if at all possible. So now I'm going to square both sides of my equation. Actually, before I square both sides, let me first factor out right here let me factor out a negative five because then it'll be easier for me to uh, do this problem so I'm gonna factor out a negative five and I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit so it's gonna be x minus five is what that's going to be over on this side and so I'm gonna square both sides of the equation when I square this left side I'm gonna get four times three x plus one times two x minus ten when I square the right side, I'm going to get 25, that negative becomes a positive, times, I'll go ahead and foil out the, the x minus 5. That would be x squared minus 10x plus 25. This is where your algebra skills have to be very good in order to not make silly mistakes on these problems. All right, so now you can see what I've got. I've got a quadratic equation now, but I've got to put it in standard form, which means I've got to foil this out. Let's go ahead and do that right here. That's going to be 6x squared minus 10 and in the middle I'm gonna have 2x minus 30x so that's a negative 28x and then when I distribute the 4 and the 25 in I'm gonna get 24x squared minus 112x minus 40 equals 25x squared minus 250x plus 625 again it looks ugly but it's actually not bad because now I'm gonna subtract the 24x to the other side, which is just going to leave me with x squared. I'm going to add the negative 12, 112x to both sides, which is going to get to the right side, I should say, which is going to give me 138x. I'm going to add 40 to the right side, which is going to give me 665. There's my equation, and now that might look really ugly, but wouldn't you know it, it factors nicely. x minus 5 and x minus 133. And so your two solutions are going to be x equals 5 and x equals 133. And when you take those two solutions one at a time and plug them in up here, you'll see that both solutions do in fact work. And again, I would use the store button in your calculator, but you can see 5 times 3 is store, using the store button in your calculator is always the best way to check if you've got a graphing calculator with you, but 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16, square root of 16 is 4, minus 0, which is 4, so that works. 133 times 3, I'm checking in my calculator, 133 times 3 equals 399, plus 1 is 400, the square root of 400 is 20, minus... 133, again, 133, I'm plugging that in for x. 133 times 2 is 266, 
minus 10 is 256, the square root of 256 is 16, so 20 minus 16 equals 4. They both check out. Both solutions are, in fact, solutions to my radical equation. That's how you do it. Careful with your algebra.